Hey guys, Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and welcome to Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not really about the gameplay, but instead is about your questions and my answers to them. A quick note on it though, this is Battlefield 3 on PC. I'm brand new to this game, I'm brand new to playing on the PC really, and, and my discovery has been that playing things like Borderlands and, and killing AI has not prepared me for playing against other people like I wish it did. But uh, I thought this was a kill and it turned out to be an assist. Anyway, um, let's get on with the, the show. I hope you enjoy a little different. This year I intend to play more games than I did in previous years. It's, it's always going to be a, a heavy COD influence on the channel, but not just Call of Duty anymore. All right, here we go. Hey Woody, I'm 18 and I just finished my first semester of college. I've been dating this amazing girl since we were 11 years old. Wow. But I moved away when I was 13. We continued to see each other twice a year. We've been going strong until recently and she's finishing high school early to come to my college. But here's where the shitty part comes in. We last saw each other in May and it was great and then she went back home and a few weeks later she got drunk with some people she barely knew and cheated on me. I forgave her because she was really drunk and she seemed really sorry. A few months ago she called me and told me that she wasn't going to go to my college because she cheated again. This time with a woman who had been flirting with her since she was only 15. The woman is 6 years older. She doesn't even seem sorry this time. It's a real bummer because I already know I bought her an engagement ring. I just don't know if I should take her back or not. When I told her about the ring she got excited and started to apologize. Should I take her back? And if I don't take her back, she will come to my school anyway. Advice on dealing with that? It would be greatly appreciated. I love your videos. Man, this is a classic case of being way too tied into just one girl. Like that... <laughs> When you're dating, right? You're 18 years old, by the way, which is pretty early to be buying engagement rings. I know you've been dating since you're 11, but you moved away at 13. Like, what kind of dating is this? Seeing each other twice a year is not the foundation of saying, all right, it's time to get married and spend the rest of our lives together. It's not. It's not. You shouldn't be buying an engagement ring at this point. And... It, I don't know if it contributed to scaring her off a little bit, but you're moving pretty fast, even though it's seven years. If you're not seeing each other constantly and you're proposing at 18, that's just early. It almost seems like she has purposely sabotaged this relationship because she's it's, it's not going at the pace she wants or she, something about it isn't working for her. So yeah, there there's problems in, in, in this area. The way you actually date people and figure out who you want to marry is you go out with them, you, you try them on for size, you know, so to speak, and uh, see if you guys are a fit. You know, if you're a fit emotionally, if you're a fit physically, if you're a fit spiritually, if you're a fit socially, you know, if you guys are a proper pair, that's what the dating process is figures out that, that that's the whole point you, you, you date for a while and and you see if uh, if you guys are a match or not I don't know how you could have done that by seeing her twice a year anyway she cheated she treated cheated twice this is not the foundation that you want to have going into marriage you don't go into marriage hoping things will get better you go into marriage when you're confident things are good that's the deal so um yeah should you take her back no no, no, you know what you should do? You should find somebody who's not a cheater. You should find someone who's in this to win it and not someone who just sort of, I don't know, doesn't share the, the commitment to you that you have for her. That's, that's the deal. <sighs> Cheaters. It sucks, man, but dump her. Dump her before you commit even more love and attention and resources to this girl, only to figure out that uh, you've invested your time in the wrong place. You need to spread yourself out a, a little wider, you know, cast your net broader, because at one girl from 11 years old to 18 years old is, is not the, the way to be doing it. Heck, she's dated as many girls as you have. Dear Woody, first I want to say I love your videos and I love how you help your subs by doing what you can. You're awesome, but now to why I'm sitting here typing this out. I'm 18, I live at home, but that's just because I'm still in college. I also have a girlfriend I've been dating for four years, and me and her have some bills such as insurance and phone, for example, that I help pay. But the thing is, I'm never really happy with the jobs I have. I hate it, and my real passion is training for my upcoming fights. I'm a cage fighter, and I love to work out and train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And everything but work always seems to get in the way of what I love. 
I make money fighting and I also help teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu classes when I can, but now it's getting to the point where I'm way too tired to train after work and make just a little less fighting than at my job, and I can't decide what to do. Any advice would be great. Thank you, and thank you for taking your time to read this. So, for this one, I brought in my friend Joe Lozon. For those of you that don't know him, Joe Lozon is a fighter in the UFC. He has more submission victories than anybody else in the history of the UFC. I think he has more fight bonuses, fight of the night, submission of the night, and knockout of the night bonuses than anyone else in the history of the UFC. So, Joe knows fighting. Joe, what do you think about this guy? What advice would you give him? How, how does he make the transition, or should he make the transition, from, I guess, low-level pro, he says he's making money fighting, to elite-level pro? So I'm, I'm kind of torn on these, because I would hate to ever discourage someone, but at the same time, I don't want to you know, go and give someone free reign to go and quit their job and have their girlfriend support them. So I, I think you really got to think, like, I have guys in my gym that they're pro fighters, and they might make a couple hundred dollars fighting, you know, every couple months. But that's not, you know, that's not anything compared to what they make at their full-time job. That's so, not a career, a couple hundred dollars a fight. No. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, definitely pursue training, you know, keep training, keep it up. But, you know, it, 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 I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go and tell a high school kid that like playing basketball to quit his job at McDonald's so he could go and play basketball all the time. I would tell him, suck it up, practice as much as you can, but keep your job. I, don't be a, you, go. you know, the, a lot of these highly desirable jobs, and I feel like I've got one too with this YouTube gig of mine. There's such long shots that you need to have a backup plan on this thing. Uh, j I know your story. You worked in IT while training full time and, 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 going and going to school, right? I had a full time job, full time job plus, and then I had a family and, and, and a full life while I uploaded a YouTube video every single day, oftentimes more than once a day. So, you know, this notion that, well, I'm kind of tired, I'm not sure if I can, you know, hold down a job and, and train at the, whole, at the same time, that's what separates the guys who make it from the guys that don't, you know, they, they, they suck it up. That's, that's your take on this? Yeah, you know, and, and you know, and both of us, we both quit our jobs to pursue this full time, you know, but I think that we're definitely in a minority and we both proved that we could make serious money and, and really take care of ourselves before we quit, you know. Before we quit the job, exactly, yeah. It, it wasn't a giant risk. There wasn't like this notion like, like I'm gonna be an actor. Step one, get rid of my job. No, <laughs> you know, step one, prove you have some kind of future in acting. Um, I agree, 100%. Dear Woody, I am in love. I'm 16 years old and I'm not that good looking. I've never been anything like Surfer Joe with the girls. Until now, I've never had anything like this that I feel. I've come to realize that a certain girl, a grade lower than me, and a sister of one of my friends who's currently abroad in France, I realize that now she is the most beautiful person in the world. I see her and I get this feeling I've never had before. I've liked other girls before, but this is the first time I can say I've ever truly loved a girl. I walk an extra mile in 27 degree weather without a coat, the walk is usually just half a mile, to get a glimpse of her while she's practicing piano in her class. She's so good at everything. She plays the violin, the oboe, the piano, and many other things I'm sure. I play the French horn and band and that's about it. How can I be good enough for her? I can't get through school days anymore because I can't get her out of my head. I want to be with her so much. I just can't find the courage to talk to her. I can't get through a school day anymore because I can't get her out of my head. She's always there. I just see her smiling at me in my head. And I want it to be like that for real, but I don't know how. I'm so afraid that someone else will ask her out first, but I just can't find the courage to talk to her. I'm more afraid of losing the opportunity to be with her than anything else. I need help. I want to be with her. There is nobody I would like to be with more. I don't care if you feature this on Mail Monday, but please help me. I picked this letter because I thought his description of being in love was absolutely charming. It is so cool to see someone and think that they are the perfect version of human humanity. That it, anyway, I think it's neat that, that you're experiencing this right now. You're in love. Very cool. But let's talk. The strategy that you need here is to actually do something. It, the last thing that you want is to spend the rest of your life wishing that you had asked her out. Do not let her date someone else and be the one that got away. You need to ask her. Uh, you, you can 
propose a time. You, you can talk to her first and get sort of some sort of... Here are the strategies, all right? Let me lay this out. How to talk to a girl that has no idea uh, who you are or if you're alive. I don't know if that's the situation here, but here it is. The best option is for you to man up and ask her, right? The best option is for you to say, all right, you know, how about you and I go to the movies? Hey, you know, The Hobbit just dropped. Would you like to go see it with me? Uh, something like that might be cool. You can do something a little more casual, you know, and ask if you can sit next to her at lunch. I don't know, but you need to ask. You need to try. You absolutely cannot go through life wishing that you had tried. If there is absolutely no way that you are ever going to be brave enough to talk to this girl, that's unfortunate because it's your best option. But your second best option is to tell her friends. If you tell her friends and say, look, you know, I really like her. Do you think she'd like me? Do you think she'd like to talk to me, etc.? That is your second best choice. If that is still too much to ask, if, if somehow you can't get the courage to talk to her friends, then your next best option is your friends. That's your third best and final option. And if you tell your friends that you like her and ask them to pass the word on to her and her friends, then um, you know, at least you will have tried something. Again, your number one choice here is to ask her out yourself. If you want something to do with her, I, I see you're 16 years old, Movies, uh, bowling, you know, you can go someplace at 16 years old. I don't know if you can drive. If you can't, you know, you could have her, yeah, and heck, you could study together. Do you have a class in common? But do not let this be a wasted opportunity that you wish you took advantage of. Do not sit here three months from now watching her date some other guy who's no better than you. That is the last option, right? That is that is failure, and when we don't want that. So, um, yeah, make a move, give this a try, and then the second half of this equation: if you get a no, do not be overly fixated on this girl. I promise you, she has a flaw, right? She is not perfect. I know, as special as she looks in your eyes, that this is difficult for you to even hear, but. The truth is, there are no perfect people. If you do date her, you will someday see the flaws in her <laughs> and uh, you know, you will decide whether you can live with them or not. But do not sit here and pine over the same girl for nine months, 12 months, 18 months and close off your eyes, your options to other people because there are other people out there that are worthy of your time even if she decides that uh, that you guys are not a perfect pair. So there you have it. There's my terrible game of Battlefield 3. But I hope that you guys enjoyed the commentary. And here comes your outro. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click on like. If you're new around here and you liked it, you can click the blue box top right where it says subscribed. Here's two videos you may have missed. On the right, I talk about profiting from strategy. And on the left, I explain how matchmaking in Black Ops 2 really works.